afternoon, everyone. So my name is Michael Hayworth. I work at um, Coots Bank. Uh, so Coots Bank, lots of people know Coots Bank. People who don't know Coots Bank, it's a bank for wealthy people. It's a private bank, so we don't tell who, anybody who our clients are. But clearly, we've got one really famous client. So hopefully, everybody knows who that is. So that's the bank I work for. Um, I don't, I'm a bit of an interloper here, so I don't work in wellbeing, I don't work in HR, uh, I don't work in policy, uh, I, nothing to do with rewards or benefits. Um, so I've got a different job, so I look after clients directly, so look at uh, speaking to uh, clients directly. Um, but we've done a lot of stuff about wellbeing uh, at Coots, tons and tons. In fact, we've won lots of awards for it. But our most, you know, our most prized award is the one that we've got from uh, Reba last year. That's our favourite award, that's the one, one that was most important to us. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, well-being fatigue. So, does it feel a bit stale? We had a conversation earlier. Does it feel a bit stale, well-being? Does it feel a bit boring? You know, when that email comes through, it's, oh, another step challenge. Oh, more bowls of fruit everywhere. Oh, you know, do we actually care? Do our, do, our, do our employees, do our teams actually care about well-being anymore? Or is it getting a bit boring? Are they getting a bit fatigued by it? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three things, three tips, which I hope will help with the momentum. And uh, nice slides have gone. So uh, I can't give you three tips. Nope. There they are. Great. <laughs> so, right. So tip one, uh, refresh the agenda. So you would have heard lots and lots of ideas here today about, um, about initiative to take uh, forward, about things you should be doing, things that you could be doing in your organizations. Um, great, you know, use them, but don't use them all in one go. Don't come back and say, right, I've got 20 different things that I haven't done previously that I think we should be doing in our organisation. Drip feed it out, take your time. Wellbeing is for the long term, not just for the initial hit. So take those ideas, take the, take the agenda that you've got and spread it out a little bit longer term. It stops the monotony of getting a wellbeing, uh, the regularity of the wellbeing stuff. Remind people about of where you've come from. So you would have started, for those people who have started on uh, wellbeing initiatives, you would have started with nothing. So remind your people, remind your employees what you started with. So 12 months ago, 18 months ago, there wasn't all this stuff. Five years ago, there was nothing. It'll make it seem and appear more valuable to them as a result. Uh, use thought leadership. So it's not just about handing out Fitbits. It's about using your brain. So that's great to hear Linda this morning and the DWP guy this morning, Angus, talk about uh, what the future of work is going to look like and, and, and what's, what are we going to be doing in our, in our jobs and in our world. Now, that is a really interesting topic to talk to your teams about, to talk to your employees about. So use thought leadership, use seminars, not just uh, initiatives, tricks and trades, I would say. Um, so that's us doing uh, a seminar on the future work, actually, uh, in the offices in the Strand. Number two, uh, refresh the people. So, uh, for those of you here who are uh, mental health first aiders or, or mental health uh, ambassadors or able to have that conversation, it is tiring work. So these guys need a break and they might need a six month break or a 12 month break. So change the people, rotate the people who are uh, having the conversations, rotate the people who are working in wellbeing, working in the wellbeing team. Nobody has a monopoly on great ideas. It's not just the well-being team that have a monopoly on great ideas. So find out who's got those interesting ideas, take them from across your organisations. Uh, change the leadership. So yeah, that could, that could be us. So this is our current leadership. So there's Mars and myself. Um, yeah, we're going to abdicate. So uh, we are not going to be uh, leads anymore. So we're going to be committed to the well-being programme. But we're going to let other people have a go. Because that would be more interesting than everybody hearing from Mars and I all the time, wouldn't it? You would think so. So... Uh, yeah, refresh the people. Finally, take it externally. So, isn't this our job, all of us here? So we all look at uh, well-being in our organisations. Why restrict it to our organisations? Why not have it externally as well? Where this came about, this is an article that was published uh, on our coots.com, so our external client-facing website, uh, which is about the work that Miles and I have done in the uh, mental health space. Now, uh, it was our most popular uh, website article of all time. So this was published in uh, December 2017. It's still never been beaten in terms of hits on the website. So more people read this article than read about our investment update, what's happening to the housing market, all the boring banking stuff. Yeah? So people read this more than anything else. And we thought, well, that's interesting. So what do we do about that? So how, do we, how do we engage our clients further 
um, to talk about well-being with them because clearly they're interested in it. So, quick exercise. I know you've been sat down for a while. Um, could you stand up if you are mainly a B2B organisation? I know you probably do B2C and B2B, so stand up if you're a B2B organisation. So we've got yeah, probably around about a third, oh, no more, um, about half the room. So you are a B2B organisation, so your clients are corporate clients, which means you probably have offices, facilities, you have paper, you have ideas that can help your clients for the longer term to stay your corporate clients, to stay your customers. So help them. Take well-being out towards them. Give them your ideas. Let them use your offices. Let them use your intellectual capital if they don't have it themselves. They will benefit it from it. Selfishly, you could say you will benefit it because you get more profit. OK, thank you very much indeed. And then finally, clearly that everybody else, which would be B2C. So if you mainly um, are a B2C organisation, would you mind standing up, please? Because we've all been sat down for ages. So B2C. Take this to your clients. Have yoga sessions with your clients. Involve them in talks about the menopause. Have conversation with your clients. They will value. This is what, this is what uh, clients want. They want to know what it is that you are doing for themselves and for their health and well-being further forward. So that's it. So thank you very much indeed. Over to you.